Hi, Dennis here, Capital Training and Chewing. I'm in here with some uh, some two-year-olds and uh, got a couple of young stallions and, and a gilding in here. And uh, what I'm gonna do is work them in a group. And, uh, and the reason that I'm gonna work them in a group is, is for one, it, it creates, it's efficiency of time for one. <laughs> so it's got a practical purpose. But I think more so than that is in this group situation, what happens is the horses will a lot of times feed off one another. And while they're getting their cues to what to do from each other, they're not paying attention to, uh, to me, to the handler as, as they should. So I'll start off working them as a group, but then, I will, then I'll single one out and get that one to hook on to me and stay with me and do whatever it is I want them to do. It's not just about getting them to hook on and follow. That's a little, that's a little part, that's a neat part, but, but it's not the main purpose behind this, but it, it is a byproduct of working in this manner. But what I find it, the, the biggest benefit is, is these colts will get quiet in what I call chaotic energy. And they will start looking for an opportunity to find me as their source of comfort, as their source of, of relief from the chaos. And uh, so I'll just go ahead and start to work here and, as things unfold, you know, right now they're over there picking on one another, doing what horses do. So I'll go start getting involved here and get them traveling in a direction. This pen is probably 80 foot long, 40 foot wide, so it, it's, a, it's a little bit too long, <laughs> but it's, a, it's, a, it's still small enough that I can, I can uh, set up the situation so that they find what it is I'm looking for. I, I don't make them do anything. I just set situations up. So I'm going to create energy here towards this corner and send them on. I'm letting that lead horse follow on through there. And when they came through, you see they left and they went down to the other end of the barn they, or other, other end of the pen. So they listened to me for a second those two colts in the in the lead are not paying any attention at all to me. They're they're playing off of each other. Just is. So I'm gonna keep them moving. Just keep them moving. Brown colt was just looking outside the window and wasn't paying any attention to me. Palomino colt was paying attention to me and didn't go with the pack. But it wasn't what I was wanting. Now, as I get more involved here with them, I think you can see that they're they're trying to look me up. You know, they're trying to find that place of of relief because it's not the first time I've I've done this with them. So right now they're just they're using up uh, uh, excess energy. So the stall freshness is coming off. I move this way, they'll move that way. So that, as I'm going towards their their hip, they're just moving the opposite way. They should have come down this fence up here on this side there. Those two colts fed off one another and run down into that corner. This colt is doing his own thing up here and not really paying attention just yet. So they're, they're starting to find some consequence in not doing what I want them to do. See him once in a while. 
kind of go towards one another in a in an aggressive way just doing things that horses do bit overreactive most of the time here just staying steady with that energy Tuck his head over the fence there and left so when he did that I put a little more energy out there I didn't just back off and, and let him ignore me that way so he come down here on this end and he got real attentive I'm gonna let this particular colt stand there and kind of take him out of the chaos because he came down here and he on purpose looked me up he quit feeding off of his his roommates he started getting real attentive and quiet to me I'm gonna touch him here I'm gonna walk around behind him and he should follow me all the way around here Stay attentive to me. We'll see if he'll do that in the opposite direction. We'll see what happens here. Okay. Now, while I'm doing this with this colt, if you look down there, you see those two colts have found a place to stop pause and look and they're not sparring with one another now they're paying attention to me not as not as much attention as this colt is but they but they are attentive to me so i'm gonna i'm gonna leave this colt here and i'm gonna go work one of these other ones doesn't matter which one i'll just pick one out Work the soil cold here first. He seems to be the most reactive. So I'll just send him around there and let him use up a little energy. So even though there's three horses in the pen here, I'm focused on only the soil. I'm just keeping him steadily busy. He used that brown colt as an excuse right there. there. He almost he almost found a way to look in at me, but then he said, no, I gotta, I gotta keep moving. I gotta stay. He's about ready to find, find me in here, but the temptation to go down the rail is still pretty strong in him. He's trying to hide behind the Palomino colt there now. He's looking outside hiding behind that palomino. I'm ignoring the palomino and still working the sorrel. <laughs> when he gave me his full attention, that, that was my time to quit. He still feeding off of that other colt a little bit. That other colt went over there and hid behind him and was about ready to take his attention. But he was able to stay there with it. But as I approach him, especially as I'm talking here, I'm gonna be quiet here just a minute. He couldn't stay there, that's okay. So, Still pretty reactive. It's all right, there's a... Let him just think there a minute. I like that, he come and found me, see? Let him just relax in that if he will. He's still, he's still pretty, 
sure that he needs to protect himself. See now, right there, when he was coming towards me, it was the right thing, but the attitude that he had behind coming towards me wasn't. He was just thinking about getting down there with that other colt, so he was coming close to me so he could get by. Now he's hiding behind the Palomino. Just keep enough energy going here to where the back fence doesn't offer any relief but looking at me offers relief it's tall in the brown now the saw went over there and used that palomino to hide behind but yet hiding behind there with a pretty good attitude so i'm gonna let them sit there a minute and just sit there with their attention on me Work this brown colt. Sorrel could have stayed back there with the Palomino and kept himself out of work, but he 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 chose to come up here. Still looking for a way out. The pal the sorrel colt. He's not. He's not uh, paying attention as he should. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna continue to work the sorrel coat. I'd like to get my hand on him, reassure him that. That time I stepped up there in front of him and didn't let him run down that fence. I'd like for him to find find me in the middle of the pen. By that I mean quit looking for a way out. Don't look under the gate. Try to get out. Don't look out the back fence trying to get out. Don't look down the sidewall trying to go by me. But find me in the middle of the pen right there. Don't look out the back fence. His only escape is to turn towards me right there. He's trying to run down the fence. <laughs> Brown Colt said, don't come down here, you'll get me in work. That's why he got aggressive to the sorrel, so I'll keep working the sorrel. See how quiet that Palomino was when I came by him there. Hey. Now he's gonna use getting a drink of water as an excuse. Looking out the back fence. Here we go, right there. No.
Come on. Let him have a minute there. Come down. If you quit when they're, they're kind of halfway here, they're never going to figure out where the right answer is. But if he start figuring out pretty soon here that giving me full attention gives him his relief. Just want, just want to rub on him here. Use this rope as a, a brush. Let him feel the peace that comes in having me close to him. There's a nice change right there. See, he just moved his back feet. He didn't come all the way through, but he was able to move those back feet just enough that he could stay there. When I get here, just breathe, and let him know everything's all right by making it real comfortable for me 
being here close in his presence. Close in his presence. It wasn't my choice for him to come down here and go through that much work. He put, he put himself through that with choices that he was making. I would show him every time that he, he came full attention on me. Sticking that head down there trying to, trying to ignore me. He's hung on the fence. He's hung on the fence. There, he's off. So I just kept enough pressure on until he found that, that he could find some relief and actually turn far enough to look at me out of that right eye. Turning far enough to to give me that right eye. same time I'm putting some effort back here toward this hip. And have him come through here. he came without pulling on my hand. I'm just wanting him to do move his hindquarters here away. Move those hindquarters away. I'm going to let him sit right there. Give him some room. Let him feel that release that came by just getting in that position right there. Now I'm gonna work the brown coat. So I took, I took the, the sorrel and worked until he found a good place to be. And now I'm gonna ignore the sorrel and work the brown. Brown Colt's still looking for places to hide, looking to, to go down the rail, under the fence, over the back fence, hiding behind the sorrel colt now. He was able to get that sorrel colt to come down there and join in with him, so he was gonna use him for an excuse. Now I'll do the same thing here that we did with the sorrel. I'll set it, set it up. He was, he was looking down the fence here, gonna leave. When they, when they put their nose down like that, they're, they're just ignoring you, hoping you'll go away, hoping you'll quit. He needs to pay attention to me, not what every other horse is done. I, it doesn't matter to me that he is the young stallion. He needs to sit up there and pay attention to me. See if he'll make that through. He, he was almost in a real good spot and then he thought he had to leave, but he went out there and corrected himself. So I feel like if I'd have been too quick to correct him right there, I would have uh, I would have missed the opportunity for him to go out there and find it on his own. And this is very valuable and very useful. Almost any situation that we will get this colt in. Uh, I don't want him thinking about leaving when I when I'm up there with him. I want him to. 
they hooked on me. back up and move to the to my left a little bit he should just move his hip to the right and face up to me he might have to leave temptation of those other horses was a little bit too much for him right there so he had to leave it's okay meantime those two colts down there got to rest got to kind of gather their thoughts a little better very nice now let's bring these down in there with him. Yep, Sorrel's still a little bit anxious about being next to that brown because he thinks he might get bit there. He's gonna have to find his way. So, the aggressiveness that the, this colt was showing, I'll, I'll deal with here. I'll protect those other two colts from him. Put him to work. So the rope's gonna allow me to do the same thing I was doing without the rope. That colt was doing everything he could think of to avoid listening to me. So when I put the rope on him, it surprised him and Give me an opportunity here to get his full attention on me. Instead of trying to figure out a way to avoid me. You know, if I'd have been in a little bit smaller of an area, it might not have had to rope him, but putting a rope on him served a purpose here to change his attitude, hopefully. And when he heard that come down and he thought he was gonna have to leave, I'll keep it on there, I'll give him a chance. I'll give him a chance. If I say, be giving him a chance, right there. He had a chance to stay with me so he didn't have to feel the consequence of not staying with me. I know I was moving a little abruptly around there, but that's okay. That's why I'm moving abruptly up here a little bit. Get this colt where I'm more important to him than trying to leave right now. Leaving is more important than I am.
and get on the other side. When I leave, he should leave. When I stop, he should stop. When I decide to go to him, he needs to be staying put instead of looking for a way out. So the attitude there is much better than it was. So I'll take that rope off. Start back here with the Palomino. Very good. Go up here with the sorrel. Now if you notice now, the respectful distance that this colt is keeping. And we've got full attention from all three of them. All was really good attitude. So that's what I like to do in a situation like this, you know, and, and I just stay with it until the marbles all fall in place, until we get willingness and responsiveness, and, and then this becomes useful in almost every area of their life.